gets in the sun Darling, only the good die young. Welcome back. Did you know that one in four Canadians is a family caregiver? That's more than eight million people. And most of those people juggle work. They juggle raising children at the same time. Joining us now is the founder of Canada Cares, Caroline Tap McDougall, who says Canadian caregivers may be too kind for their own good, and that comes with some serious health risks. Welcome, Caroline. Thank you. What do you mean by they're too kind for their own good? Well, I think what happens to us is that, of course, we feel sometimes duty-bound. We feel that we're being honourable adult sons and daughters. And so we just keep on going to provide the help that's needed. And I think sometimes our health is at risk because it can be 24-7. It can be that we're juggling work and kids, but it just never stops. It's a long-term commitment, and that's hard for us. Well, Caroline, the stats actually prove what you're saying, and it's Mm -hmm. surprising to me that three-quarters of family members don't find the time to go to the doctor, Uh, more than half of them don't eat properly, and up to half of them have clinical symptoms of depression. Why is that? Well, I think if you think about what we're doing, we're actually in a situation that sometimes there is no real cure for. We're caring for aging parents who are getting more frail, who are getting diagnoses that aren't necessarily, it's not good news, is it? And so I think there's sort of the mental health thing and the disappointment and the sadness. And then there's also all the physical things that go along with having to provide care. It could be the shopping. It could be sort of taking people to doctor's appointments. It could be bathing, all of those things. So it's a lot of work. When you talk about the caregiver, are, are you talking uh, mainly about uh, spouse, partners, uh, what can affect them going through it? Or or are we also going down to the sandwich generation, the children? Well, everybody's circumstances are different. I mean, Mm. we look at things, we talk about the caregiving journey, okay? And so if you look that sometimes it's somebody who's on their own, sometimes it's a spouse, sometimes it's a parent caring for a young child. So I think we we can't sort of generalize and say it's always this or that. We know that it affects one in four of us. And each one of us has to kind of step up and figure out what we can contribute and what we're going to be able to do. But that's where it gets tricky because Mm -hmm. there's no exact formula. And we tend to keep going until it's too much. And then the caregiver burns out. But what is the answer? Because for many people, they didn't, you know, prepare for that financially to have somebody come in. They they haven't thought about that. Right. Um, And if... Often now, you've got maybe siblings that live the other side of the world, so it's left to one person. You're exactly right, one person, and that's usually what happens. And it's often um, the woman, the oldest daughter, um, that we find is providing the care still. And um, I guess the solution is that what you need to do is try to work out a plan. I think what happens is we try to go day to day to day because it's a changing circumstance. And sometimes what you have to do, as with anything, is step back and look and say, okay, what are the resources that are available to me? Who else can help? Sometimes it's a neighbor that can do something. Sometimes people are members of a church. Sometimes it's a community support area or or organization. So I think, again, it's different depending also on where you live. You know, if you're in the rural areas of Canada, it's much harder sometimes. Do you think it's that we don't realize how much this impacts our own health? That we just feel that we're doing the right thing and that it'll be fine? I remember when I was caring for my mom, and that's exactly right. I mean, I would just be getting off a plane and tearing to the nursing home, or every time the nursing home called, I'd be there. And after a while, yeah, you suddenly realize you're exhausted, and you really aren't looking after your children or yourself. So again, I think what I recommend to people is you step back every once in a while, and you basically say, okay, you know, let's halt, let's see who else can help. Sometimes a long distance brother or sister can make a difference, you know, and there's different things that you can do if you communicate. Oftentimes we don't communicate. Also, it's a question of support Mm -hmm. uh, because most of us don't reach out. Our friends really don't want to hear about it because maybe they're not going through it at the same time we are. I went through it for years and then, and then, you know, and Kate wasn't going through it at the same time and now... She is a bit, and I'm not. So 
we don't want to be Debbie Downers, so we don't say too much. But I think it's probably important to find some support. And there are support groups, for instance, organizations like the Alzheimer's Society, mm-hmm. who we, we partner with, have support groups. They have all sorts of helpful ideas and, and sort of people who've gone through that before. They, they'll mentor you, for instance. They'll, they'll share ideas with you. So that's a good part of it. You know, look for support and talk about it. Well, according to, to the National Academy of Sciences, the stress of caregiving for someone with dementia has been shown to impact a person's immune system for up to three years after the caregiving ends. So that increases the chances of developing a chronic illness themselves, right? You're exactly right. And you don't really realize that. You're suddenly, phew, you know, okay, I don't need to deal with this. But then you've got the sadness, you've got the grieving, and also, you know, you're, you're worn out. So, yeah, it's very true. And also, oftentimes, we've compromised at work as well, where we've sort of not taken a promotion or not traveled as much. I know I had to cut back my traveling. And so I was always making an excuse and trying to get one of my coworkers to go and do that for me. So there's other things as well that affect it. So, Well, Caroline, give us an idea. With the number of Canadians living with dementia also growing, what is the landscape look like in terms of the need for caregivers must be growing? Are there enough of them? Are there enough professional caregivers that people can hire? That's a good question. Um, I look at it and I say it's similar to what we've done for child care. Okay, so when I was having young children, we had nannies and we had caregivers and there was always a bit of a struggle for that, right, Mm -hmm. to find good caregiving. So again, it goes back to your means. I think there will be some people who will be able to afford and pay for live-in caregivers. Other people will work with, you know, what's available through the government home care programs. Some people will sort of tough it out on their own. But certainly I'm expecting that there's going to be a shortage and it's not going to be easy to find someone to. Well, one of the things that that you are doing, you mentioned that you partner with the Alzheimer's Society of Toronto and Canada Cares and uh, the Society are putting on a Beatles tribute concert. That's November 11th at Toronto's TELUS Centre for Performance and Learning. And it's in support of family caregivers from coast to coast to coast. So tell us what people can expect at that. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a Beatles tribute band and we have a couple of other performers. And our whole attitude at Canada Cares is to really celebrate caregivers. We can always look at all the things that, you know, we're putting ourselves at risk. There aren't enough caregivers. It's a terrible time in our lives. But what we do is we try to celebrate and we have our Canada Cares Awards as well. And so we point uh, point to the people who are doing things well and we celebrate those things. So it'll be a fun evening, very lively. We expect to have people dancing in the aisles and we've got a lot of our friends and and patrons and people who support us there. How many tickets are there? I mean, how many people do you expect to have there? Well, the hall holds a thousand people. (laughs) We still have a few hundred tickets to sell, so we're hoping uh, that people will hear us on the radio and come out and join us. And you're also going to to give uh, to our listeners and our followers uh, two pairs of tickets. We are. Okay, so you can, we will be putting up posts uh, about that all across our social, but how do people that want to go directly to help support this excellent event, where do mm-hmm. they go? Well, they can go to Kerner Hall directly to the box office, but they can also visit our website, which is CanadaCares.org. CanadaCares.org. So, mm-hmm. And buy their tickets. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you hopeful for the future? Because we hear the population is aging, we hear, we see the statistics. I am because I'm Canadian, and I think that the way we deal with things in Canada is that we care for each other and we are, you know, pretty open to trying to come up with good solutions. So I, I do have confidence. Well, that's that's a relief because many people are talking, always talk in terms of a crisis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm heartened to hear that you have confidence that we will solve this if we step back and take a look and plan properly. Mm-hmm. It's a hard thing to do, though. And talk to each other and communicate and not be afraid to tell other people what's going on in your life. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it, the, the, I think one of the most difficult things for, for me, my, my family, as a family member with dementia, is almost the loneliness of the caregiver because it's very, very difficult. And then you want to step up and you want to help and that wears everybody down. So it, it really does take a village, as they say. You really do have to reach out to everyone. And to realize that you're not alone. That there are lots of other families going through this, and it's often your coworker right next to you, and you don't even know it. 
Mm -hmm. And it helps to know that. Well, Caroline Tap McDougal, thank you so much for joining us this evening and for sharing this and for raising a little bit of awareness. So maybe we, we do reach out to the person next to us next time. Thank you. This is what she said. Stay with us. 